thank you, Mr. President, for giving me this chance to, um, to share my cause and my story um, and uh, to tell you why is it important to support democracy. Um, I think there is a fine line that this House failed to recognize between colonized foreign policy and protecting values and protecting the principles of democracy. Until now, this House and the world has not witnessed any other form of government that substitute democracy. Democracy is the only way forward for implementing the policies on the basis of which human rights of human beings are protected, principles of human beings and human rights are protected. This is so true in the case of Afghanistan. In the case of Afghanistan, people of Afghanistan stood by democratic values. They risked their lives. Women of Afghanistan stood in the front line, side by side with their international allies to protect not only democracy for themselves, but global security. For the past 20 years, women of Afghanistan, people of Afghanistan have taken enormous level of risk to protect the global security, to protect their rights. However, it was the world, it was our wrong politics who failed democracy. It was not the people of Afghanistan that failed democracy. People of Afghanistan have taken, went to the pull, polling stations, risked their lives to cast their votes. However, it was our wrong politics that people's vote from the ballot were never actually counted because we had a colonized uh, view, because there is the, that narrow line, the fine line between intervention and support was missed. We must stand with the nations to support them in fulfilling their uh, democratic rights. Mr. President, I see that the world has become very radical in their views. There is an Eastern radicalization who believe that the Western world is so progressive that the Western world do not stick to the values. And there is the Western world who believe the Eastern world is not pro-education. The Eastern world is conservative. That middle ground is shrinking. The third room is shrinking. It's a common responsibility of us, the global community, to provide people the space to create their third room. None of these perspectives of radicalized views of east toward west and west toward east is right. There is a third view, and the third view is that we can live together in coexistence, in harmony, only if we respect each other's values, only if we give each other the chance, which was not the case in Afghanistan. In Afghanistan, the case of Afghanistan became a matter of domestic politics, of the superpowers. Instead of looking what is best for the country, what is best for the people of Afghanistan, they looked at what is best for their own country. As a global citizen, we have a responsibility to protect rule of law and order in the rest of the world. I believe if the world did not fail in Afghanistan, the Ukraine situation would have not been where it is now. By pulling the way they pulled the troop from Afghanistan, the West paved the way for the war in Ukraine. President Putin or any other never dared to intervene the way they did in Ukraine if Afghanistan was not in the hands of Taliban. The world only has a, a, a security lens toward the situation. Mr. President, I'm sorry to say that as long as we continue to only have a, a security lens to the situation, and we do not regard human rights, women rights, civic liberties as a matter of security, we will continue to fail our global values. So therefore, it's a common responsibility for us to stand with those global values. In the case of Afghanistan, that the, the, this, this issue of security lens unfortunately resulted the, the return of Taliban because the world created a narrative for Taliban that they are the one who would defeat the rest of military extremist groups. We fail to forget that under the Taliban first rule in Afghanistan that Al-Qaeda attacked United States. 
We assigned a military extremist group like Taliban in the Doha deal signed on the 29th of February between the United States and the Taliban. We assigned the Taliban to take responsibility of the global security. We assigned them to fight Daesh, Al-Qaeda, and other military extremist groups. We forgot that they are the one hosting this, these uh, uh, military extremist groups. And after Taliban returned to power last July, the leader of Al-Qaeda was killed in Kabul. Iman al-Zawahiri. That's a proof that only looking at, uh, from a security perspective without working for the values, democracy, without listening to the people, without empowering the people in those nations, we will continue to fail. The world promoted two narratives with Taliban. The first narrative was Taliban will defeat the rest of military extremist groups. And the second narrative was that Taliban have changed, that there are Taliban 2.0 that they are pro-woman, that they are moderate, that they have changed. The rest of the world asked Taliban to protect women's rights and human rights, while in the Doha agreement signed between United States and Taliban, never they mentioned one word of, in support of human rights and women's rights and democracy. This is a failure in our parts. This is a failure for us to recognize that as much as security is important, that much Sticking to these values and, and global principles are important. If you see the Doha agreement, nowhere it's mentioned that women rights, democracy are important. And in my argument with American diplomats, when I asked them, why did you not ask Taliban, why did you not hold them accountable for their deeds on suppression of women and human rights in Afghanistan? Their response was that we negotiated our own issues with Taliban, you go and negotiate your own issue. As if, as if divided the issues, security, withdrawal from Afghanistan was their issue, women and human rights was our issue. What happened to our common values? What happened to the principles on the basis of which the international community announced that they are going to Afghanistan to help people of Afghanistan achieve democracy? What happened to our promises? When we were left alone, we felt betrayed. The easy path was for international community to look at what their domestic politics interest is and to withdraw from Afghanistan the way they did. After the Doha agreement was signed with Taliban, I went to negotiate with them in a good faith, with the hope that we will be able to agree on a coexistence, that we will be able to agree on a, a political path that will restore the values that people of Afghanistan fought for invested blood and treasure for. But by then it was too late because the Taliban thought that they are the victory forces, that the United States dealt with them on a security agreement, that they, do, they see no need to engage with people of Afghanistan. I believe as long as we continue to ignore the people, the situation in, the, in, uh, in Afghanistan will continue to happen in, 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 in the rest of the world. So therefore, the more we focus on a colonized foreign policy and in, involve the regional geopolitics without for, uh, ensuring that democracy, that people's power, that people's will is important, there is no difference between us and those military extremist groups. We all have a one, they both have one thing in common, security approach and not rule of law and not constitution and not human rights and not principles of uh, universal principles. During the negotiation, the Taliban were so proud of their agreement with Americans. They told me that they have agreed with Americans on everything and they don't see the need to talk to us. Americans forgot the people of Afghanistan. They forgot their partners. They forgot the women of Afghanistan that stood by, with them side by side, courageously fighting for their rights. They thought security is a matter that they should talk. The rest, human rights, women's rights, future of democracy, governance, it is for women. It is for people of Afghanistan to negotiate. In the last 20 years, people of Afghanistan have proven that they are pro-democracy. I remember when there was voting, 
People were traveling from the areas which was controlled by Taliban. And they were casting their votes. When they were casting their votes, their fingers were inked because that was the only means of voting, manual voting. When they returned to their villages, Taliban saw their fingers were inked, they cut their fingers. They punished them for voting. Is that what we want to do? We punish people for standing with democracy? We punish people for standing with rights? No, we shouldn't. Despite that, people took the risk, the risk to exercise their rights. We gave Afghanistan, a country so much in, in support of uh, democracy, in support of uh, a normal life, people who deserve to live in dignity. We gave it to a group that has taken now the people of Afghanistan in hostage. They don't let women exercise their rights because they're afraid of women's power. They're afraid of women's right. These groups see women, these military groups, centered in security, see women as their enemy. That's why we have to stand in the right side of the history. The right side of the history is no alternative for democracy. We must support people in fulfilling their democratic rights. Thank you.